Hi guys, this is Miss Raina coming to you from C347 at MacArthur High School in the brand new year of 2014 to talk to you about momentum. At this time, please take out your handout entitled Flip Notes, Momentum, Impulse, and Collisions 1. It is dated January 6th. When you see a start like this, that's just a cue. It means you have something to write down. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's suppose you were captured by some crazy lady um, and she gives you the following choice, you know, whoever this crazy lady is. You have to either stand in front of a thousand kilogram truck moving at one meter per second, or stand in front of a one kilogram meatball moving at 1,000 meters per second. So think about that for a little while and we'll come back to it. Um, the meatball looks to be very dangerous. It's not very big, uh, but it's going really, really, really quick. I'm sure you can think of something else that's really small but moves really quick and can be dangerous. So again, We'll come back to it later. Let's start writing down um, number three, your definition. So before we do the formal definition, let's think of momentum in terms of sports. Um, and I would encourage you to write down this layman's definition. It's basically how difficult is it to stop a moving object? If we can put a number on that, that's momentum. So momentum depends on mass and velocity. Go ahead and write that down in your equation box. The little p is a term for progress, the quantity of motion which a body proceeds in a certain direction. So, yeah, I think it sometimes doesn't make a lot of sense to people that momentum is symbolized with p, but we can't really call it m, can we, because that stands for mass. So we'll call it p for progress. Um, and there's your answer for number five. We're going to skip number four for right now. So actually, let's, uh, let's talk about the kinetic energy and the momentum. Um, which one is worse between the meatball and the truck? Well, kinetic energy, we can figure it out by doing one half mv squared. Okay, so let's think about this. If momentum is E equals mv, then if we want to compare the two objects, well, remember that the mass of the meatball was just one kilogram and the velocity was 1,000 meters per second, it's going to end up to be pretty much equal to 1,000 kilograms times the velocity of the truck, but was just one meter per second. Um, the difference is kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. Hi. Hi. Sorry. Had to say hello to a student. Um, here we have the units for momentum problems. So in every case, we'll have kilograms times meters per second. Conservation of momentum. Let's go ahead and get down to the next section. Um, and here you have the definition. Means momentum isn't created or destroyed in any given system. In other words, it might be transferred from one object to another, um, but only if there's an outside or an external force. So. What does that actually mean to us? It means in a problem, the momentum before a collision is going to equal the momentum after a collision. You should write this down in the equation box for conservation of momentum. Um, the same thing applies for something called a recoil velocity. So if I shoot a gun or if I shoot, I don't know, uh, a pellet, an arrow, whatever, um, the momentum before is going to equal the momentum after. Okay, here's a, a vocab alert. We got a couple of vocabulary terms here for closed system, isolated system, and system in general. Go ahead and pause the video here if you like and write down your definitions. Uh, so let's try calculating a recoil velocity of a four kilogram rifle. We've got mass there. Whoops. There's mass. And it shoots a, a 0 0.05 kilogram bullet, but that's also a mass. So I'm going to call that mass 2, and I'm going to call this one mass 1. Um, what is it that's going a speed of 280 meters per second? I'm going to guess that that is the bullet. Um, so I'm going to call that velocity of the bullet. Conservation of momentum tells us that the momentum before equals the momentum after. Well, what's the momentum before? The gun hasn't been shot, nothing is happening. So the momentum of the rifle and the momentum of the bullet are each 
zero. Um, now what's going on after is we have to calculate the recoil velocity of the rifle. So the mass of my rifle and my mass one times my recoil velocity has got to add up with my mass two or the mass of my bullet and the bullet's velocity. And you guys can label these any way you want to. My job is to figure out the recoil velocity or the velocity of my rifle. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to figure out here. I've got to isolate my V. In other words, let me go ahead and subtract my M to V bullet from either side. Sorry, that's supposed to be a subscript. That gives me negative M2V bullet on this side equal to the mass of my rifle times the velocity of my rifle. That's my recoil velocity that I'm looking for. All right, in order to isolate my recoil velocity, I'm going to have to cancel out the mass of the rifle. So let me divide both sides by M1. It means that my recoil velocity is going to be equal to negative M1 V bullet divided by, sorry, that should be M2, divided by M1. Um, put that just over here. All right, so that's going to be equal to 0 0.05 kilograms times the velocity of my bullet divided by the mass of the rifle. All right, if you got, uh, let's see, 3.5 out of your calculator when you punch that in, you are just right, and let's just check units here. Yep, sure enough, the kilograms cancel out and we should get meters per second. You might have caught me, this is a negative 3.5, and uh, whoa, does that mean we did something wrong? Absolutely not. It just means that the recoil velocity is in the opposite direction of the velocity of the bullet. In other words, the bullet is going that way, the gun has got to be recoiling the opposite way. Kind of makes sense. So, sorry if it's difficult to see, but it's because the rifle has a much larger mass and the bullet, um, the bullet's velocity is going to be much larger than the recoil velocity of the rifle. Okay, we're going to pause right there. We're going to go ahead and talk about impulse the next time we do a flip video. Thanks very much for sticking with me through these notes, and uh, we'll talk more about this in class.